Hello guys, this is Julia from Just One More Card and I have a Halloween themed card for you featuring one of my favorite stamps ever from my favorite things and coloring on black with pencils. Yes, I know, I'm crazy. So first of all, I'm starting out by placing this super cute witch on my black cardstock and I'm just trying to make sure that I'll have enough space for my sentiment, which I'll have to add later on. And I'm using Hero Arts white ink, uh, white pigment ink. And I don't even want to have a crisp impression, so that came actually out a little bit um, whiter than I had intended, um, as you can see when I lift it up here. Uh, but I have an outline that I can work with. Now coloring on black is a little bit challenging because, you know, it's kind of dark, so it does need some time um, to actually build up all the colors. And you can see here, before I proceeded, I actually added um, some eyes in, and that's a trick I learned from Jane Allen. If you guys are not following Jane Allen yet, she is amazing when it comes to no-line coloring. Like, she is magical. Um, by every account of the word. Um, so uh, that card was inspired by her and by um, Emma Louise Ireland. Um, I'm, if I don't forget, I'll link to both of them in the video description below. They are both absolutely fantastic when it comes to coloring, especially with pencils and especially on something like craft or black. I haven't really done a lot of coloring on black, um, so I was uh, like very carefully building up my colors, and I'm actually here, this is uh, kind of jumped because otherwise this video would have been forever. But what I did is I basically went from the darkest color to the lightest color over and over, and these are about four layers now. And I know it looks a little bit weird, but bear with me, sometimes it takes a while to, for everything to take shape. So don't be afraid if you are coloring like at some stage looks really, really bad and really weird, it's gonna look fine in the end. You just have to get past the stage where everything looks creepy like it does here. The witch will be super, super cute, I promise you. You can see that I'm just adding um, some more um, shadow areas here and then blending them out towards the lightest areas. And it's, it's a process that takes patience, you know? Sometimes you have to stop and walk away from it for a little bit um, to, uh, to get a new perspective, because like at least for me, if I've been coloring something for like an hour or so, and then look at it, I'm not entirely sure if it's good or not. So sometimes I need to put it aside, like have lunch, or come back to it the next day, and then I'm like, oh, actually, this isn't as bad as I thought, or maybe I need to, to change something here. So it's completely fine to walk away from something for a while. You can see I messed up the eye there a little bit. And then to accentuate the whites of the eyes, I used my white pencil. And you can see now it's already starting to look quite dimensional, just with the little detail I added there in the eye. So that is basically the skin done. Um, and now I'm going to, um, I'm trying to leave like space for the highlights in the eyes, but of course it's very challenging because everything is so tiny. So in the end, I ended up um, actually just coloring everything in um, with the, the pink and then just added the white on top. I'm using a um, Caran d'Ache white pencil and that pencil um, is, is um, it's very opaque, so it's especially good on colored stuff, but also to go over um, existing color layers. Here on the, um, on the hat, what I did is I used the white to um, make sure that uh, the highlights would stay visible, and if I add the white underneath other colors, they come out lighter. Ob well, kind of obviously, but you know, it's just super helpful, and you can see here I'm using it to indicate the highlight areas in this purple hat. And it was actually quite difficult to color at first because the purple is quite dark. So what I did here is you can see that I added a lot of white where I think the highlight area is supposed to be, and just a little bit of white in the other areas so the the, the purple would actually not be completely dark. It was a little bit challenging to color because the when I was looking at it um, from my perspective, it was kind of hard sometimes to see where the purple ended and the black began. Um, so I just really patiently build up the color and the final result will be actually quite good. So you can see I'm actually using a very light pink color here for the, the highlight area. You can always go over those highlight areas as you can see me do here with a darker color, but I needed to make sure that this highlight area would actually show up. 
And I think that actually worked out quite nicely. You can see here I'm using my white just to accentuate um, the border between the outside of the hat and the inside. You can see the, the underside of the hat there. Because if you wouldn't accentuate that border, it would just be like one dark blob. And that wouldn't be terribly helpful. Now for the coat, I'm just going to show you um, a little bit of the coloring because I have uh, oodles of coloring videos that show how to do folds. And that is something that I learned from uh, the Kid and Clouder coloring classes. Literally all my coloring skills come from the Kid and Clouder online coloring classes. Um, uh, and I'll have a link where you uh, that you can use to check out those classes and to sign up. And if you guys decide to sign up um, and leave a comment for Elise, the owner of Kid and Clouder, that I sent you, I'm actually going to get a tiny commission at no extra cost to you. It's not going to cost you anything extra, but it's going to help me to take more coloring classes and to also improve my coloring levels. So, um, you know, it's going to cost you like five seconds, but I would really appreciate it if you, if you sign up for a class, if you just leave Alice a note. Um, because Literally everything that I know about coloring, I learned from her. She's an amazing teacher and I had no idea how to do folds just a few years ago. And thanks to her, I am so much more confident. I would have never dared to color an image like this just a few years ago. You know, the skin and the clothes and the hair. I mean, oh gosh, the hair would have never dared to do that. But now I'm really confident. I really like how the, um, the, the part of the hair turned out that I'm coloring right now, the left part here, because I decided to give her black hair. So all I really, really needed to do was to add in the highlights. And that's what you c see me do here. I'm basically just adding in some highlights with my white and very light gray pencil. And then I'm smoothing those highlights out with a very dark gray pencil, just so they are not too, um, too bright. So I'm just, you know, dimming them down a little bit here. Always make sure that your pencils are very sharp. Remember, I use the Tigal sharpener. Um, I'm going to link to it on my blog um, because it's absolutely perfect for sharpening. I really like it. Um, uh, I didn't really like how the, the right side of the hair turned out because maybe because it's curved. So I didn't really do a good job there from my perspective. But I really like this side right here. You can see that I'm spending quite a bit of time trying to get this right. Um, and that's simply because there, the area isn't large and you to, to create the illusion of those fine strands of hair, you need to leave um, space between those like bright lines, that between those highlight lines to make sure that it actually looks, to me at least, natural. I really like that look. Um, and I probably should have left it there looking at it from, uh, you know, right now should have just left it at this, but I just kept going and I don't think I actually <laughs> improved the look. Um, but then again, there's always room for improvement for everybody and uh, I didn't color for months, so it's actually something that I really need to pick up again. Now I'm coloring the broom and I'm actually, uh, uh, like from this entire image, I like the broom best. And of course my camera crapped out here, I'm so sorry about that. Um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm a I'm employing a similar technique as you would use for folds. So I'm starting out with the darkest color and then I'm just blending this out with the, with lighter colors, um, going a little bit further. And you can see that I'm always leaving a little bit of space here to make sure that I can add even more highlight colors. You can see how the broom starts to take shape. There we go. And in the, at the very end, I'll um, come in with some very dark colors and even add some more colors into the, into the shadow areas. And I'm also going to come in with my white pencil and add, it some, add in some highlights. And you, will, you can see here you end up with a lot of streaks. So that was a lot of fun. Like I li really like how the broom turned out. <laughs> That's like my favorite part of the image. Now for her dress, I'm using the same technique as I did on the broom. Um, starting out with the darkest areas here in the center. And they're a little bit like triangle shaped. And then I'm adding lighter colors on each side and just blending this out towards the top. And then you create the illusion of folds. Again, there's, enti there's an entire class at Kid and Cloud that only deals with coloring clothes. And that class was just a heaven sent for me. Like I had no idea really what I was doing uh, until I took that class and then suddenly I was like, oh my goodness, this is how you do it. I was just delighted to finally learn that and be more confident in my coloring. 
I'm filling in the space here with my brightest color and then I decided that was a little bit too bright. So I'm coming back in with my darker colors and I'm taking up more room with the darker colors. You can see that I'm spreading them out a little bit more so that I will only end up with a very narrow area of very bright color in the end. You can see here how I'm darkening everything up and now it looks a lot more natural. I'm coming in with the white here just to accentuate the highlight colors. And then I'm dimming this down a little bit further. Of course, uh, sometimes you just have to keep it simple as well. And I was looking at the stockings and I'm like, oh, which color could I use that I didn't use before? And I was just like, hey, let's make it black and white because that's easy. And that's what I did. Now for the sentiment, I'm using one of the sentiments that comes in the, in the stamp set as well. And I'm using uh, Hero Arts white pigment ink and you can see it's just absolutely perfect. And then I very carefully added in some highlights or some um, accents with my white gel pen just to make sure that the hat really looked magical. It just, I don't know, it just invited me to add something. And you can see I added some kind of crosses there to indicate like very bright stars, um, like in a magical universe, universe sky. And I also added some white highlights to her dress there. But otherwise I kept it super simple because I wanted the focus to be on the witch. And you can see here the nice detail that I got in the, in the um, broom. Totally unintended. I'm so happy that it worked out that way. And uh, the detail that I added to her hat. And here's a close-up of her cape and of her dress. And of the eyes that I accentuated with a white highlight later on after I colored them in completely with my pencil. So I hope you got inspired. I hope you will coloring, you give coloring on black a go. Um, it's it's a little bit challenging, but it's so much fun if it turns out okay. Here are some more examples of coloring uh, with pencils or Copic markers. I hope you enjoy them. And if you like the video, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. I have more videos to come. Cheers!